Now that we have trained our classification model, we can move on to building the back end of our application. First, go into a folder where you want to store your code files and make it a folder for back end. Next, make an assets folder and place your weights right here, along with the JSON file containing the IDs and corresponding labels in the data set, and maybe a sample image. So, place these things in the assets folder and make an app.py file where you will write all the codes for your backend. Now, before writing the actual codes, it's important to install all the dependencies that we are going to use in the application. First of all, it is recommended that you create either a code environment or maybe a virtual environment. Please also make sure that you are using Python version that is greater than or equal to 3.9 in your environment. To start the process, we will need Ultralytics because we need to run the inference using the classification model. Once this is done, we will install the other modules. Also, in order to install embed chain, we will use the command pip install upgrade embed chain. Now we will install the flask modules that we will use to create the flask API. So we will need flask and flask cores cross origin resource sharing. We are done here. We also need Wikipedia and Google search Python, which will be used to create the source from where we want our large language model to fetch information. So we will install Wikipedia and Google search Python. All right, now that we have everything installed, we can move on to building the code for the application. Let's test the inference model. We will first import YOLO from Ultra Legs, then create an instance of the model. The model is in our assets folder named best.pt. Also, in order to read the label of the ID that we get, we will need to use the JSON file. We define a function called inference where we parse the image to get results. After processing the results, we can get the label and print it. Now that we have created the inference function, we can continue with integrating the large language model LLM for chat. In order to integrate the LLM, we need to import the embed chain and create an instance of the app class. Next, we can define a chat function that will use our classification model to get a label for an image, which will be the input for our chatbot. We'll stop here for now because we need to fetch the Wikipedia page and create a source of information for this chatbot. So let me create a folder. Let me check this scripts folder. Here I will create a Python file. Let's name it URL.py. Then we will import Wikipedia and also import search from Google search and import search. We will now define a function get wikipedia url it will take a keyword and find a corresponding wikipedia page for this keyword so first page equals wikipedia dot page i will parse the keyword and i will return the page url if this works so return page dot url we'll add an exception condition if we get a disambiguation error or exceptions.page error, we will return none. If in case the Wikipedia page is not found, what we will do is get the URL for the first page, which appears on Google searches for your keyword on the Google search. Because of that, we'll define a function. Get Google first result. Again, this will first try to fetch the URL, so we will use the search function that we have noted. Parse it into the keyword, and we will only fetch the first result. So the number of results is going to be one. We will simply look at the result, and if it is successful, otherwise, if we stomp the iteration and can't find anything, then we will simply make a function which will basically incorporate both of them. So let's go get a relevant URL. Again, if you also take the keyword in and also this function keyword argument. Then we'll try to get the wiki URL and this will use the get Wikipedia URL function. We will parse it the keyword. If we get a wiki URL, we will return the wiki URL. Now let's try this function. I have a keyword, let's say programming, maybe artificial intelligence. So let's put the text print get relevant URL keyword. Then let's run this file, Python scripts slash URL.py. As you can see here, we got the Wikipedia page for artificial intelligence. Now we know that the function is working. So what we will do is import this function from app.py file. So we will do this. Let's put the text from scripts.url import get relevant URL. Now what we will do is put URL as equal to get relevant URL and parse the label that we have obtained from the classification model. Once we have completed that, we will add this as the source of information for the chatbot. Basically, all the content of this URL will be added as a source for this large language model. In that chain, we will make sure that the large language model will only choose what works with the Wikipedia page or the Google search page that we are providing it and it will only use that as a source of information. 
it will automatically handle the creation of the vector database and the searching of the relevant portion from that URL and also the query based on that. So what I will do here is create a query so that it will contain a template for the query that we are going to parse to the URL as it is the chatbot. Now we will have the template from the string. Let's put the text from string import template. Now we will add the template. So the template will be something like this botanist bot plant information service. The name is bracket name. Let's just move to the activity bracket dollar sign name. And we will ask you to please provide the following details about the plant. So we ask it, give a brief introduction to the plant. We will also parse it for its scientific name. And let's also ask about the native habitat and the ideal growing conditions. We'll also ask what the soil type is, what sort of sunlight exposure needs, and what its water requirement is, etc, etc. Also, we can add interesting facts about the plant and its historical uses, its unique characteristics, etc. Lastly, we can add any other useful information. Alright, thank you. So, this will be the template that we will be parsing to the chatbot. Alright, now what we will do is press the info. So, let's type info equals to botanist bot dot chat. Then we will parse the first query template that we have defined and we will only substitute method in the template and parse the name variable, which is labeled in our case. So let's be careful. Now, what I can do is call the chat function and see what it does. Let's call it the chat function from our application, Python app.py. Oh, and I forgot one thing. We didn't add our OpenAI API key. So let's do it for now. Let me do it quickly. Let's add the opening API key. Let me add it here. This also needs to import OS. Okay, that should do. Now, let me run the Python app.py file. I should get a response from the chatbot. So we have the inference. Here we can see that a folder is automatically created called DB. Now we got an error. Okay, maybe I'm having a connection issue. Let me resolve it first. As you can see, it has created the chunks for the Wikipedia page and now it is working on getting the information. You can see here the scientific name is native habitat, the ideal growing conditions, and some interesting facts. Now our chatbot is working perfectly. We can now create the Flask API to expose the chatbot to a URL where we can connect the front end. In order to create the Flask API, we will first import the Flask model into our application. So let's put from import flask from import request and JSONify then we will import cores from flask cores. That is all about it for the API. Here we can see that we have defined a chat function. And first of all, we have to define a route where we can receive the uploaded image from the front end and send back the label along with the information that we gathered from the chatbot. So let me first create the app from the Flask module. Let's add an if statement that checks if the name equals main colon, then let's add the text app.run parentheses debug equals true. Now we will create a route URL. So let's add at app.route parentheses backslash upload and the methods is going post. We will define the function upload. Okay, first of all, we will check if the user has a test of following the API that we are receiving. So if file not in request.files. So we're done with that. We didn't see any uploaded files, so the error will be no file part. Otherwise, we have received a file. We will first of all convert the image to an OpenCV format. Then we will create an io.bytes.io object. For that, I need to import io.bytes.io. Then I will save the file in memory at the back end. Next, we will read the data from the file to np.from buffer. And of course, we need to import numpy as np. Here, we will parse the memory file and get value function. And we will look at the data type to be np.uint8. Then the color image block one. And the image is going to be cv2.ime encode data and the color in its flag. Now, we can call the inference function right here to get the label. So the label is going to be inference image. From there on, the flow of the application will be once a user uploads the image and clicks on the process button. We receive the image at the back end and then we classify it using our model. This happens when we call the influence function. After doing that, we will call our chatbot, which will then send that information back at the front end to display it. So what we can do is just copy the code here and paste it right here, the upload function. Okay. Let me give the line indenting. All right. In addition, instead of initializing the chatbot when the app is none, we will only start it once we have received a request from the user to upload. 
Once the user clicks on the process button and sends us the data, what we want to do is whenever the user uploads a new image, we want to initialize a new instance of the chatbot because we don't want to mess up our data so that the chatbot might not give us information from the other plant. Let's say if the user uploads one image, gets information about it, and then uploads the second image, we don't want the data for the two plants to get mixed up. So we will initialize a new instance of the chatbot every time the user clicks on the process button. Here, we will add a another instance of the chatbot. So the button is bot that is equal to app. Let me just comment out this function because this was just for testing purposes. We will make the actual exact function quite differently. Not so differently, but with a few modifications. So let me initialize the chatbot right here. All right, what will happen now is that whenever the user uploads a new image, we read the MS, we parse it to the classifier to classification model, we read the label, and parse it to the model. But first of all, we get the relevant Wikipedia page and set it as a source of information that we want our chat model to use. Now, we just need to return this information. So let's put the text return JSONify. We will return the label to the front end and the information that we have received from the chatbot in the info as well. Again, if this condition is not satisfied that we could not read the file, we simply serve return JSON file fail to process the image. Okay, now let's work on the chat function. Let's say the request is not in JSON format or there is not in request JSON. It will give an error that there was no message provided. Now we will put the data. It will put request.getJSON. Then maybe the user message from the data. Again, we can call the chat function and it will just send the user message. Let's store this. Let's put bot response and now we can simply return this as it is an object. All right, now our chat function is also done. I could delete the previous one as I don't need it any longer. Let's also get rid of this. Of course, I have to parse this new image that we have read, so let's double check everything. We have imported everything. We first initialized the Flask app. We have to set the OpenAI API key environment variable. We are reading the model and we have initialized the botanist bot available. We have read the class dictionary and we have defined the inference function. Here, we have also defined the route slash upload URL and we have defined the upload function corresponding to it. We're able to check whether the user has uploaded the file and if the file is in the correct format, we then read the file and then convert it into an OpenCV format and then we parse it to the function. We're able to get the label too and created a URL format. We made the botanist bot a global variable. We initialized the embed chain app and then we simply add the URL as a source for this chatbot. We defined the first query that we wanted to use and then we simply parsed this to the chatbot and got some information from it and then returned it. If the user sends another message, we will be dealing with it in the chat URL and this is how we will be handling it. Now our backend looks good to go. I can just save this and let me see everything up. Now we'll be working on our front end and once our front end is up and running, we can quickly test all this content and see if the backend is there as well. So that's no algorithm on the front end.